you know, uh, I'm a real believer that the city of Austin as the capital city belongs to no special interest group, no special political credo, no special individual. It belongs to all Austinites, and in a sense, it belongs to all Texans as the capital city. Nothing more exemplifies that as Austin Community College. As a product and myself of, of, of the community college system, I can tell you that I never would have gone to college if it hadn't been for the fact that we had a community college in my city. One of the things that we said was that the community college was successful if it penetrated every home in its designated community. So we tried to offer the diversity that would make it attractive in terms of options to people all over Austin. I never felt that there was any institution, nor do I to this day, that was meeting more human needs than we were at Austin Community College. No frills, it doesn't have any football team to either win or lose national championship, doesn't have any basketball team, no band, no cheerleaders, no, <laughs> it, it does a fine job educating people. Check this out. Ah, look at the bulletin board. Austin Community College. Still got position. Look at this. <laughs> Birds are. <laughs> this is funny. What's the date? 1989. Okay, 1989. Bursars came cheap back then. Look at this. 19 to 24,000. This is interesting. We know this is the original site. I mean, <laughs> notices. Here they are. This was, uh, this was Dr. Hatfield's office. Yeah, this was Tom's office. Somewhere in there. Yeah, was here. It? This was, was Dr. Here? Hatfield's office. Yeah. And this is where I had my interview down this hall. My first interview. We took one classroom down there on the right. It became the science and math division. We all were in one classroom, and the offices were constructed by used bookcases we bought in downtown Austin. So that was kind of the, about the second or third. Remember that we had our offices mm -hmm. down here. Yeah, you could, it was like you know the the prairie doggy. You know, you walk in and people look up over their um, right <laughs> bookcases. Yeah, I think this is part of the office. <laughs> Good grief! Oh, I can't believe that all of us were in there. It was just the excitement of starting something new and all that sort of thing. And we were all coming, I mean, you're talking 73, we were all coming out of the 60s and we were going to change the face of higher education and look at whose face changed. <laughs> but education in Austin did change here forever. It was here that Austin Community College came into being with the opening of its first campus in September 1973. The halls of Ridgeview are silent now, but they were once filled with wide collars and bell-bottom jeans, afro and shag haircuts, and something else, a group of eager young faculty and students opening a new door to educational opportunity. My vision had to do um, with the kinds of people who would be served by Austin Community College. I literally carried around in my head the notion of people of every hue and color and ethnic background and both men and women and providing opportunities for people to do what they wanted to do. It was like a story coming true. I mean, I couldn't have, I couldn't have designed anything more better. As I look back at it, I couldn't have designed anything better than this. In most places you go, everything is already designed. It's already, it's already laid out there. Here we are, we're pioneers. We're on the frontier. We're out there and what you do is the first time it's been done. September 17th, you know, 1973, the first student walked in the first class and the institution started. The creation of Austin Community College, however, was anything but a snap. Well, the idea of a community college in Austin is a, is a long standing. In the late 1960s, uh, there were two efforts to create an Austin Community College, uh, and to create a, a community college requires a, a, a local vote. Uh, both of those efforts failed. A lot of people thought that was weird, that we would ne have a need for another college in Austin or university in Austin when we had University of Texas, St. Edward University, Houston Tillotson, Concordia, Southwestern in Georgetown, Southwest Texas in San Marcos, say, at Texas A&M just 90 miles away. And nobody really believed that you had a need for the uniqueness of a community junior college. But uh, at the coordinating board, we did know that there was that need. Many students could not adopt their schedules to go to the University of Texas. You know, they were working, they had time at night, the University of Texas didn't offer night courses, 
So there was a need for that, uh, you know, uh, for that kind of a, a, a course of a course offering. When those elections were held, the electors, the voters in Austin, had to vote on two propositions. One was whether they wanted a community college, which they definitely said they did, and the other one, other uh, proposition on their ballot was, would they approve any new property taxes for the college? And the answer was no. And the presumption at that time uh, was that if there were no local taxes supporting the community college, then the community college uh, could not operate. There was an old statute, an old law in Texas that permitted public school boards and public school districts to create a community college. And we could be the governing body for that community college. I think there were two at the time, one in Houston and one in El Paso. And so having the statutory ability to do this, we thought we had the credibility and the capacity to convince the people to do it. I'm not sure it was a groundswell as much as a serious concern about a community as large, as diverse, and as educationally attuned as Austin was not having what it was a very significant movement in higher education. And there was a concern that the closest one was at Colleen, Central Texas. And it just seemed to be, be a little bit out of kilter for the large community of Austin to have to commute to a smaller community. I literally went door to door knocking. I put on my tennis shoes and warm ups, my, my usual attire. But I went door to door knocking doors, campaigning for Austin Community College. We were very concerned because since the junior college issue had been defeated twice. It was a unique sort of a proposal because we were, as I said a moment ago, we were kind of in the middle of planning for desegregation and integration. And that freed up the building at 12th and Rio Grande as a campus, a surplus property, so to speak. And it freed up the old Anderson High School, which was over in East Austin. It gave us two really fine buildings that could be used for campus for this community college. And that's the one of the biggest, biggest things you have is access to capital properties and buildings. We had these buildings, we had our own leadership, and we had a plan to do it on a very low cost basis. That was enough to uh, convince the people that it should be done. It's, it's really kind of exciting, because we've come a long way. You know, very, we've got very extensive, we're all over the county now, and uh, we certainly have uh, better programs and better real estate than we had back then. But it's amazing, people came to us. And if it hadn't been for them, if the people hadn't shown up those first semesters or two, then uh, probably we wouldn't be talking this morning about all of this. We had two months to prepare other colleges at the same time that were uh, coming on board had uh, six months to a year to prepare, but we had two months. So it was fast and furious. I ended up sitting in the cafeteria at the Ridgeview campus with about four or five catalogs spread open and trying to pick the best that I could from each of the catalogs and writing policies uh, for the college. And then I just took him to Tom and Tom signed off on it and nobody else looked at him and they, they were the official policies of the college. I mean, we had one month, four weeks, to write the catalog, schedule the classes, do the whole nine yards, hire faculty, everything. I had babies at home, I needed a job. I needed a job so bad. <laughs> and I heard about this college that started up and I finally got an interview. The story was told that I think it was uh, Tom Hatfield and Joe Lostraco and uh, uh, George Wilkerson and I think Lennis Polnick. I might be wrong about the people, but they were conducting an interview. One of them was being hired. And in the middle of the interview, and I still remember very clearly, in the middle of the interview, <clears throat> I looked and out of the corner of my eye, there was, a, there was a rat coming out of the half bath. And right in the middle of the interview, this raccoon comes crashing through the ceiling tile. The truth is, it was a rat. I mean, they're sitting in a circle talking to each other, and all of a sudden, this animal just drops from the ceiling. Boom. I sat there and I saw this rat and I thought, here I have dazzled these people, you know, I have done my very best and this rat's going to come in and, and destroy the interview. And I think the fall just knocked him unconscious for a second. So I took the trash can, flipped it upside down, right on top of the rat, 
put a heavy book on it. And then Tom Hatfield was real cool. He gets a trash can that's sitting right next to him, just empties out all the trash, puts the trash can on top of the animal, puts his feet on top of it, continues the interview like nothing had happened. Tom Hatfield stood up and said, Jim, you have attributes that will serve you well in the coming years at Austin Community College. And, uh, and the person I heard that, that was being interviewed had said, I want to work in a place like this. I mean, these people are really cool. You know? Who caught the rat? Truth is, probably George may have caught the rat. I, I, it wasn't me, uh, somebody else. While the details get fuzzy over time, the spirit of these early stories remains clear. Old facilities and meager supplies brought out the resourcefulness in the faculty and staff. I remember kind of looking around, and if I saw paper clips on the floor, I'd pick them up and put them in my pocket. Every instructor was given one ream of paper for the year. If you wanted to run off anything more than that, you had to buy your own paper. We found some paper later on, but I remember going to my own pocket as an adjunct faculty member, making only a few hundred dollars a course, and go out and buying additional stuff. In the first few years at Austin Community College, we registered people all over town. Four different days, four different locations. It was maddening. Well, you can say that this was the mobile registrar's office for ACC. Made things happen. Out of nothing, almost. One of the things that I did at, uh, at Ridgeview, which was controversial at the time, but was I had the football field paved over for parking. There was no place for people to park, and we had you know, several thousand students were coming each day to Ridgeview. So we got permission to pave it all over. That asphalted the football field. And I knew at that point, right then, that this college, one of two things or both would always be true. Either this college, would forever and always wrestle with its parking problems, or they were going to field one badass football team. Ridgeview basically was sliding down the hill. There was a part of the building that was going down the hill, and you can even see. Uh, the cracks in the building and everything like that. And to me, that was one of the reasons we had to leave that campus because we were literally falling apart. Rains like this was always uh, uh, a terrifying experience as to whether the uh, building was going to shift more and shut us down. I don't think, uh, I don't think the facilities were important. I think what was important was the quality of the instruction. I think we had a lot of uh, as I said before, some idealists that uh, really believed in what they were doing and they believed that it started in the classroom. Wherever that classroom might be, these first years of ACC were times of rapid growth and expansion and the young community college grew along with its home city. Well, in the early days, Austin was real simple. Ah. Don't crowd us, don't crowd us. The main part of my day is traffic. Well, wait a minute, y'all. Wait a minute now. I mean, y'all can go on. Go ahead. Just don't run over me. ACC grew. It was the fastest growing community college for the first eight years in the United States. The, the major issue for ACC's entire existence has been how to accommodate the thousands of thousands of people who wanted to enroll in its, in its various programs. And we had that, that problem uh, from the first day we opened classes. Five years from its start, ACC was a fully accredited institution, offering courses at as many as 60 sites in the Austin area, including its two main campuses, Ridgeview and Rio Grande. With expanded course offerings and programs, lines at registration expanded too, and facilities filled to capacity. Registration was almost like war. I think about registration, I always think about an auction. I always think of cattle being shuffled through and the long lines. It was so chaotic. Perhaps uh, the notion that it was like uh, a cattle barn or an auction uh, is pretty true because uh, there is a building just adjacent to this one that really is a barn. And I think that in the earlier stages uh, of, of this facility, it, it was used uh, for the uh, stock shows and that sort of thing. 
of course it was cleaned up at the time we used it. It was a satisfying experience, uh, but it was, uh, it, was, it was a mob scene. <laughs> it definitely was. We were all so young, you couldn't tell the, stu the students from the faculty. I mean, we, did, we didn't know who we were or who the students were. I mean, it was just everybody mingling together. I watched, just like you said, I watched the school grow quite a bit. Austin Community College, the college people said no one needed already has an enrollment of nearly 20,000 students, and it's still growing. This makes Austin Community College the 15th largest amongst all colleges and universities in the entire state of Texas. What problems do you see ACC having to overcome in order to meet the challenges of the future? One of the biggest, uh, obviously, is facilities. The space to do the type educational program that we want particularly in the occupational areas where you need large square footage and sophisticated equipment. A second is financial resources, then to employ sufficient personnel to do the kind of teaching that we want to do and the counseling and advising that we have. The college Under President Cecil Groves, the college came to the inevitable conclusion that tax funding would be necessary to meet the community's ever-increasing needs for college services. Petition signatures were collected, bonds and taxing authority proposed, and in April 1981, the issue was put to Travis County voters. And I told Cecil at that time, I said, that's too big a packet. You know, people are going to say, you're going, getting real big, I think it was 60, 70 million dollars of buildings. You know, we're going we're gonna to have problems with that. And ultimately, that was what brought everything down. And that was probably as big a disappointment as I ever had when it was, when it was turned down the way it was. The propositions were soundly defeated. The college, however, was not. A major step in its coming of age occurred the following year when the board of the Austin Independent School District decided to spin off an independent ACC Board of Trustees. Within the next year, Austin Community College had reached yet another milestone, the purchase of its first property, the Austin Country Club. The momentum continued with the arrival of President Dan Angel. In the first uh, six months I was here, I met with 200 community leaders, uh, sometimes in groups of two or three, but often just one-on-one -on -one for lunch, breakfast, business meetings, or whatever. Told them what the, what the uh, college needed to do and that we needed their help. And the biggest surprise to me is out of approximately 200 people, there were only three or four that said no. I remember a great uh, picture in the Statesman of all these people stuffed into a phone booth and they were saying this was space at, at ACC. It was kind of like that when you went to class. And it wasn't too far off the mark. ACC was operating in rundown facilities, rented facilities throughout our district. Uh, programs were not adequately funded in terms of those that were uh, reliant on uh, high tech, uh, equipment intensive programs. Um, so it was critical to get the tax base. People volunteered, staff members volunteered, their families volunteered. We would walk through the neighborhoods, we would put out flyers. The key was that everybody who was contacted at ACC knew the answer. So, and the answer was, we're only asking for five cents. And this is what we're going to do with this five cents. This community really came together to get that done. And to take a scenario that was like 60, 40, no, to 55, yes, was a pretty important undertaking. Good evening. Things are looking good tonight for Austin Community College. All of the votes are in and counted, showing the ACC tax base passed. And with all the precincts in... I remember the night that it passed. Uh, I uh, have a kind of a tradition that I smoke a cigar when something major happens, and I bought myself a box that night, and I went to this event. After we passed this, uh, we were able to do things. We were able to start planning buildings. We were able to go into interim buildings. Uh, I remember wearing a tuxedo down to the opening of a temporary Rutherford campus that we had. Uh, these were all events. They were red-letter days. Uh, we, we built campuses. Uh, we started off building a north campus, a south campus. We spent money renovating Rio Grande. Uh, we bought the uh, central office that you're in. Uh, we bought the uh, Pinnacle facility. We built the campus out in Leander. We annexed Leander, which is a whole different part of the district, 
and pass the tax base. So that accounts for at least a dozen cigars along the way. ACC today is made up of six main campuses and numerous off-campus sites, and it's now the second largest college in all of Central Texas. The college offers some 300 programs leading to associate degrees and technical and occupational degrees and certificates. Specialized programs from semiconductor manufacturing technology and vocational nursing to commercial music management and photography are housed at individual campuses, while all campuses offer general education courses, making them convenient for students across the service area. ACC also brings college and community resources together to provide educational services for businesses and those seeking continuing and adult education. I think the major thing that has happened is the availability of campuses throughout the metropolitan area and also all the technology that we have. I mean, back then your choice was white chalk or yellow chalk, and that was about it. I really believe in the distance learning and the open campus uh, that we're getting to. A, we are touching the lives of a lot more students. We offered our first recorded telecourse in the uh, spring of 1979, and that was U.S. government. Back then, we only had recorded telecourses. We only had access part-time to a channel. Uh, Judy Doyen had to take the uh, master tapes, drive up to the base of Mount Larson, walk up a dirt road, and go into a metal hut and play the tapes. Uh, and that was our technology at that time. Uh, of course, now we've, you know, we've added the capability of doing live classes. We have two ITFS channels that go out to cable uh, customers throughout the metropolitan area. We even have interactive video class classrooms right now here at the Riverside campus, so we're interacting with Fredericksburg and here at the Riverside campus in the nursing program. We, ha we have ITV, uh, we have computer-based instruction, uh, teaching over the internet. We, we do all of those things. There, We have so many different uh, ways of delivering instruction. I think what's really interesting also is not only physically that we'll have a new campus in East Austin across the street where we started, but also in a real sense we are better able now to meet the goals of individualized and personalized instruction much better than we could 25 years ago. I would get it that right there. I think it's good that we put most of our energy into this tree because this gives us... Our plan is that since this is the first campus of ACC, this was the original campus, that trees that the students planted in the 80s would be propagated and sent to the new campus, the newest campus of ACC, which is being built not far from here. You know, we plant students. We plant... We plant knowledge and curiosity and hopefully some wisdom and some inspiration in the minds of students and we like to watch them grow and I think trees are a wonderful symbol for what we do at ACC. I watched a community college grow from idea to reality but you really felt you were part of something uh, something special. We are a safe haven and we're a place for people to come and get an education and to try and improve their lives in life. I know that ACC was there for me when I needed it and I want to um, make sure that everyone knows that it is there for them whenever people think that they that college isn't an option. I, um, I want them to know that, that it is and um, I mean, we're all over town. It doesn't matter how many campuses we have or how many students we have, large or small, we still care about each individual and helping them achieve their educational goals and hopefully they'll be successful in life. I think it's really important for ACC to build on its past. Uh, I think first of all we need to be especially responsive to our business community. That means we've done a good job in the past, we have to do even a better job linking our program offerings to the marketplace and to job opportunities. And secondly and, mo and equally important we need to be the college that provides opportunity for our entire community. And I think this is really important to provide continued access to all the residents in our area. Every time I see a student walking in that door, and particularly those coming at night when they are very, very tired, I see a part of me. So I must admit that I'm probably a little bit more teary-eyed and perhaps a little bit more protective about ACC than maybe some people. It's just been a good 25 years. 
It's been a lot of fun of, and, for, and frustration, uh, but it's been worth it. I guess they're going to watch us walk off into the sunset. Here. I guess so, like this. <laughs> 25 years is a long time. I guess I miss being uh, 25 years younger than I am today. <laughs> <laughs> really know no stories about folks. None that will really be repeated. <laughs> not the <that> bears repeating. <laughs> That's not on tape, is it? <laughs> you, you've probably heard the story about uh, uh, Jim Archer, then a, a chemistry teacher who would drive around and carry all of the stuff for his courses in his labs in the back of his Carmen Ghia. If there had been a wreck in it, you know, it was just who knows what would have happened. I mean, there would have been all kinds of, uh, ah, there, would have been, there would have been hell to pay, as the saying goes. I got a phone call one day. And it said, Marilyn, this is Dan. Can you come to my office? And I said, Dan who? Marilyn, it's Dan. Twenty-three years, I've been going this fast. Let's go. 